Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here. Let's talk some mountain weather. Very interesting pattern coming up, but first I want to show you what's happening now. A ridge of high pressure is in control. Crystal clear skies up there all day over the Tetons. The sun's getting ready to set on the, uh, the west side of the Tetons. We'll probably have another day of this. And then I want to show you my bullet points here. Watch what happens here. So active pattern setting up 1130 to 1280. And we could even see a west-northwest flow type of setup in the uh, upper atmosphere. That could really benefit the Tetons, the Wasatch, and the central to northern mountains of Colorado with heavy snowfall. Some big accumulations possible if that sets up in earnest. You can see the timeline for snow. Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, all very similar, 12-1 to 12-4, somewhere in there. Um, so that starts this weekend in many places. Um, and then there's a second hit of moisture, 12-7 to 12-8 in all of those places. Let me take you back. I want to show you water vapor satellite imagery. So this is when you see the oranges and reds, that's your drier air aloft. The moisture in the atmosphere is in the whites and the blues. So this is a little area of low pressure here sliding on shore to California, but it's going to be a backbreaker for the a high pressure that's in control. It's going to come to the south, track through the four corners, Arizona, New Mexico, and undercut the ridge. So that's important to the storm track that's going to take shape 1130 to 12 8. Behind it, big area of low pressure here, and another one behind that. There's a little bit of something here organized over Hawaii, along with the southern branch, which is going to play a role in all of this as well, because it's going to guide this first area of low pressure down into the four corners. And then these are these two lows are riding the polar branch, and it's going to come in behind that low, fill the void, and that's going to set up this pattern with potentially that west-northwest flow. So here's how it plays out. Forecast radar satellite. Uh, again, just it's just high and dry right now across the Intermountain West. But look at California. Here comes that little southern track low. So by the morning of 1130, we've got snow in Arizona and New Mexico. Continues through the afternoon. But what it does, look at this, it opens the door for a much more widespread snow pattern. What you see here is the combination of two things. Another low that comes in on the southern branch and moisture and energy coming in on the northern branch. So that's 12-1 in the morning. Here's the afternoon. Now watch what happens. So on the evening of, well, watch, let's go one more day into the future. Here is Saturday, 12-2. Once that moisture begins to move away, look at everything reload in the Pacific Northwest. So the upper atmospheric winds become more favorable out of the west-northwest. You can almost see it happening. And what that's going to do is it's going to send energy and moisture um, into the Tetons, into the Wasatch, and into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. At prefer in many places, this is a preferred direction. So watch what happens here. Look at that. We're loading up on the, on the afternoon, the evening of 12-2. Here it comes. Look at that. You've got three big wave trains of moisture. Central and northern mountains of Colorado, Wasatch, Tetons, and another one upstream, and they all continue to fire downstream. Look at that. All the way through Sunday night and potentially into Monday as well. That could be a really efficient snow producer. All right, let's talk about the jet configuration. That's always vital. This is 1129, so tomorrow at uh, late 11 p.m., you can see the little dip in the jet over Arizona with that southern track low, the backbreaker. Here is the, uh, look at this, 12-2, hip deep in it at this point. Uh, look at the west-northwest flow coming in, and that's really the case at all the way down to about 10,000. A lot of the steering winds at, at ridge top level are going to be probably synced up with this. So if that happens again, we're looking for some pretty nice totals. Um, so that's 12.2. And look at this. On 12.7, there comes that final surge of that final storm system. You can see the dip in the jet coming in. And again, a pretty good orientation. It's dropping down through Idaho into Utah, Wyoming, Colorado. So we've got a lot to look forward to there. As far as totals, we'll do this in three phases. So not much happening between now and 11.30. That southern track low it drops a little bit of snow. A little bit up in the Pacific Northwest. Phase 2 is really the, uh, the meat um, of this entire forecast. And you can see the hot spots here with that west-northwest flow and the Tetons a couple of feet. Should be fairly easy. And I'm sure in the updates to come, if this holds together, that a couple of feet will be very easy in the Wasatch. In Colorado, the central and northern mountains, the western slope in particular, will crank out the biggest totals. Um, you can see the numbers there. Uh, we'll have to see what um, the final steering winds are as we get closer as to whether Crested Butte, Aspen Snowmass will be 
you know, whether we'll see those numbers flip flop back and forth, but who will be the biggest beneficiary there? Certainly, um, Northern Colorado will do well as well. Um, and look at the Pacific Northwest, anywhere from 25 to 50 inches. That's going to be big. And finally, some good snow for Idaho. And the interior uh, sections of BC could get a foot. Final phase, that final shot of moisture here. All this would eventually then move through on the 8th, 12 8th. So that snow would spread into Colorado. And this adds another, what is that, another 2 to 4, 2 to 6. So that's going to do it. I think I've got one more update here, and this is for the Northeast. I had bigger numbers earlier today with this upcoming storm system, but now it, it doesn't close off as a low as much on the coast. So the numbers have been basically cut in half, but this is still decent, 6 to 12 inches for most places at higher elevations, mid-mountain and higher for Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this update. Uh, pretty exciting times ahead, potentially. Let's just keep our fingers crossed. This holds together. Thanks for tuning in here, and uh, take care.